Okay, so you guys, I need to leave out of here a little bit early. So what I'm going to do is just demonstrate the boning today. I'm going to do a recording. The only thing we're going to do is prep our boning, pin it in, and sew it today. And then if I think I want to try to get out of here 3.45, 4 o'clock, um, if anybody needs help with catching up, after I do the demonstration, I'll walk around and help you if you need help with catching up. Okay? So just let me know if that's okay. So right now, you should have your shell of your corset put together. Um, we base, machine basted it to the buff from last class. Then you have your lining. That should be interface. You should have your um, interface and piece, your lining pieces. That should be stitched up like this as well. If you don't have those two things, make sure you get those two things done. You do need to have this whole thing seen before we can put the buff on it. Okay. So, and I'm a little behind with putting the videos up. Hopefully, I can catch the steps that we've been taking so far. So, depending on whether you have um, the Ridgeland, so I'm going to put Ridgeland in mine or the covered boning um, you're still going to need to cover the edges and you're going to need to measure for each piece so what i need you to do is go ahead and grab your mechanical pencil um, and either your tailor's chalk and your clear ruler because you're going to need to measure for each seam okay? and i just think you'll be really organized when you do it so the boning is going to be applied to each seam except for the center back. Okay. If you're doing a center front closure, you will not have boning in the center front. Okay. Okay. So first step, and remember, your boning is only going to be applied to your shell, so that has the buffer. First step, I'm going to go in and mark my half inch seam allowance here, and you can do this with chalk or your pencil. So half inch from the top and here. I'm not marking. Normally, I would mark right here where it's going to go. Um, but you won't be able to see my pencil because it's clear. I'm gonna go get chalk on the back. But you guys mark with chalk on the inside of yours because your bone is gonna be applied there. And then I'll go back there. So what you're gonna do is go in and measure for that seam, and you need to do this with each seam. So they should be symmetrical. So whatever this side back seam is, the same measurement should be uh, applied to this side back, okay? because it's symmetrical. So I'm going to go and measure the distance between those two marks, which is like six and five, six and five eighths, I think it is. Okay, and then I'm going to take about an eighth of an inch off, okay? So you can measure it, or you can just go and Estimate it, so I'm going to clip this, so I have a straight edge on my original, and I'm going to go in here, line this up, and I want to leave just a tiny little bit of space, so when we turn it out, the boning is not forcing right at my seam allowance here. So I'm going to cut it about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch shorter, okay? So I can mark with my chalk here or just go and cut it. Okay, and I'm going to cut two pieces for my five back. So this one, I can cut another one the same length that's going to go over on this side. Okay. I have those two pieces. I want to make sure I don't mix these up. So next I would measure for the 
side seam. So there's my half inch from the top, half inch from the bottom. Put my bone in here. An eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch shorter, and I'll have another piece for this seam over on this side. Now, the difficult seam we will not have boning in the center front, the difficult seam is this curved seam. Okay, so again, measure your half inch from the top. Bottom. I ran out of my black, so now we're using the white. And I'm going to try my best to measure out this seam to estimate it because it is curved. And then I'm going to cut it to an uh, eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch shorter. So I need you guys to go ahead and cut the length of your boning for each seam, and then I'm going to come back and show you next how to cover the edges with it. Okay, and then we'll start cutting. So it should be marked on the tape here, but this is my particular fabric that I chose to use for the length. But you do want to see where to be able to apply. So you guys, you should have it marked on the inside of the seam with the seam open and flat. You just can't really see mine, so that's why I marked mine with pencil so you guys can see. Um, because you want to be able to see it when we go to start pinning the bone down. Here. So I have a little bit of my buffer where you can use muslin to do this. The buffer doesn't fray, so I like to use this to cover the bone, the edge of the bone. So what I'm going to do here, I have my piece, and what we do is when we insert this, it's going to end up turning on the edge here. So if I leave this just like this, especially if this was the steel or wood boning, eventually the rough edge on the boning will make its way and damage the actual fabric on the corset. So we need to cover it with fabric that's kind of like a buffer. So we're going to cover the ends of this. So what I need you to do is Cut yourself a piece that's maybe three quarters of an inch wide. That's going to be just a little rectangle. And this takes some time, so I apologize ahead of time, um, but it is necessary. What you're going to do is just fold your buckram over each edge of your bone to finish it off before we put it in the seam. So I'm going to just trim it down to the width of the boning. And then you're going to go to the machine and you're just going to stitch across it with number two stitch. So you're just going to stitch and backpack. Okay, and that's going to be on each end of the boning, open end of the boning. Okay, so that's the next step. Okay, if you have the covered boning, you can actually use um, the bias tape, the casing. And you can just slide it back, trim your boning about a quarter of an inch shorter. Okay, and then you can literally just take the edge of it, fold it over, and stitch across the edge. Okay, so I'll do the same thing on this side. I can slide the casing down, trim it a tiny bit shorter. So it will be shorter than your seam, but that's fine. I'm going to scoot it down and then I can stitch so that the casing covers the bone in the side. Okay, and then I have to stitch over the edge here. Right on the edge. Okay. Thank you for reminding me because I forgot I had to give it all time.
So you can just trace it because I know I'm going to forget later. So if you want to trace the thought today, we just did both. Thank you. You did trace them all, right? Yes. Okay.
If anybody wants to see me um, stitch the buck around just on the ends of the colony, you can come. I'm just going to stitch it so then I can show you how to apply the um, stone. So it's just number two stitch. I'm just going to stitch across the middle and back.
kind of, but it's like it's confusing with like two pieces on the side. So it's like I can have like three six sides each side of two sides. So I just ordered them in like the order of the other one. Layer. But I do have the center front and center back. Okay. Like I do have this. That's the one. thing is, is no matter which thing you do you're gonna have to kind of hold it hold the bone in there while you're talking so it is a so okay you guys want to go ahead and just match up your boning to each seam and then we're going to go to the machine and i'll show you how to So this is an example of each of the types of bonding. So this is the Ligulin stick down, so we covered the edges of the buffer, and it stitched to the seam allowance, so we push everything back, stitched it just like this on either side, just like this, it should not show through on the other side. This is one of the covered bonies. This one has more seam allowance, so you're literally just stitching in the seam allowance edge here. Again, stitching just to the seam allowance, not through to the corset. This is the boning that has. 
have the really skinny seam allowance, you can try to stitch right on that edge. And we do our best to just try to hold it right in the center of the seam. Again, just stitch 